Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I want to test making bubbles, a Strathmore mixed media card. All right, so the first step, I need watercolors, a plate or some surface to put puddles of color onto, my paper, and some things to stamp into the wet watercolor and then put on to my paper. And I even have a big cup for like making some big bubbles. I want to show you using some less expensive paint so we can, you know, really get an idea how this works. So just grab some more of that blue. Because I really don't want to twist the cup. More of that purple. And since I'm going to use the big cup, I need to have it a much bigger puddle and that green I like how that green splits to yellow but I do want to make sure that I get a good amount of that green so that the blue and the green have a chance you know so the blue and the green have a chance take that cup I'm, on, I'm setting it down and I'm giving it just a little twist. I'm not twirling it all around. Just trying to pick up a little bit more color. There we go. A little bit of that blue. All right. We're going to put one down. Try and pick up a little more color. Just and the other. All right, so that's this is what happens when it slides. That's okay. We're going to do this one first. And this is going to end up looking, I'm hoping, like two bubbles that sort of join together. You know how when you blow bubbles and they um, the soap bubbles kind of link up? And, you know, that idea may or may not work. I'm trying to work on this one a little bit first to give the other one time to kind of settle into the paper a little. Now I'm going to sweep over it. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good. That's actually kind of cool. And a lot of the magic happens when you aren't watching it. So, after you get your bubbles painted, you just let them be. There's going to be some bleed over between them. This is mixed media paper, so it's not... I need to pick up a little bit more of that blue. It's not watercolor paper, so we're trying it out on mixed media paper, see what happens. It's actually working really well. I'm just pulling the same, you know, I didn't add any more purple to this. All right. So what I need to do, I am adding a little bit more blue and a lot more water. There we go. Oh, I see. I missed a lot of that edge. I do want to work that edge so that it's not so stamped down looking. There we go. We're going to let it 
do its thing. I'm actually going to pick up just a little bit of water and dry off my brush. Pick up a little bit of that paint, kind of get a little highlight going. Dry off my brush. This is the really wet one. I'm not doing anything to the one that's almost dry now. There. Is, ooh, so pretty. I think out of all of them, I like the vibrancy of the color on the mixed media card here. I think butterflies and flowers are in my future. This is the Uniball Signo RT1. It is 0.28 for the tip. And the uh, name of this pen is the UMN155-28. So it's a very fine point. And I'm going to do a stylized butterfly. So it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be perfectly symmetrical. And I am looking to see where I want to do it. And I think the butterfly is going to be fairly fairly about this big. I'm going to go ahead and put my body on, which is basically like a giant toothpick <laughs> or a matchstick. And I'm going to go ahead and put the little antennas in before I do the wings because I'm living dangerously. And you could absolutely do this with pencil first. I'm going to segment the body just a little bit because the wings are gonna come out of, everything's gonna come out of this top third section. See how there's the bottom third and then that middle third there. But the top third up here is where I'm going to have the wings come out of. I'm just coloring this in black. So the wings, I am going to make pretty much a rounded rounded wing like that. Looks like a, blo a balloon that's being blown up, right? And then I'm going to do sort of the same thing. And these wings come together right about here and then come back up and junction back in to the body right there. So now I'm looking at this going, okay, I can, I can do this, but I'm going to turn it over so that I can kind of follow with my eye. And match back in. It's not the same size. It's a little bit smaller. Maybe this wing is tipped up just a little bit closer to you. You know? And then this one, it's going to come out. Come around. And back in. And you know, you can go back in and adjust things if you need to also. This is all doodling now, guys. This is not, this is not official drawing. But look at that. Oh, I like that. I like that shape. And now what I can do is I can go along and I can thicken up an edge. And I can thicken up an edge. And then all I'm going to do is color it in with this pen. I'm not using any other colors on this. This is just doodling. I like a, a little bit of a thickened edge on the, on the wings. This is watercolor on the background. It is not the gouache. Gouache is a little bit harder to draw on with these really fine tip pens. Fine point pens are hard to draw over gouache, but um, felt tips, if you don't mind possibly getting them gummed up, uh, they work. Let's see. I'm going to put a bit of a thickened edge on this right here, on the right hand wing, and then I'll do the same thing on the left hand wing. 
And I look at it and go, which side do I need to make a little bit bigger? I can put my thickened edge going that direction. So if I wanted this to match up a little bit better, maybe. But again, I'm talking while I'm doing this. And if you're quiet and mindful, you can actually move your design around in such a way that it stays fairly even the entire time. So I'm looking at this going, maybe I'll take and do something like that on the long wing. And then on this wing that's slightly shorter, I'll go to the outside. And that helps to match it up a little bit. See, they're matched up a little bit better for size now. And I'm going to bring that thickened edge down and around just a little bit. So that way I can push this side here out. Just remember to breathe when you're doing this. Don't hold your breath. Get some air in your lungs. There we go. This butterfly is going to be filled with patterns. And I kind of want the patterns to mimic some of the designs that you would see in a wing. So this one, going from the edge, going out, and I'm curving it, actually ends up looking kind of like a hot air balloon. And now I see some area here where I actually came inside so I'm going to color that in dark and then I'm going to mimic that on the other side so what I'll do is I'll just go to the outside edge just a little to give me room to color it in These are all little decisions that you make as you're going along. So you're not, you don't have to make all the decisions when you first sit down and start drawing. Now I did look at a butterfly to get my basic outside shape of my petal, of my petals, of my wings. Look at, look at references. See, because I'm looking at this going, I want this to come out a little farther and I want that to come out a little farther. Ooh, that's looking good. But maybe I want to put little circles with the space between them colored in dark. So it's after the holidays, or it's coming up, actually, it's before the holiday of Christmas, it's before New Year's, but sometimes we need to take a moment for ourselves before the rush and hurry of everybody being there or having to go someplace. Take some time for yourself. Take some time, enjoy just a few minutes of doing some doodling. If you don't have bubbles down, don't worry about it. Draw some butterflies and then paint some, paint some circles or shapes around your butterflies or even over your butterflies. You can, well, that was interesting. I just made a, <laughs> well, maybe I'm shifting to uh, black circles now. Part of talking while doing is that sometimes you end up changing the pattern. That's okay. Well, that's kind of cool though. And then I think maybe 
I'm going to go to white on the next one and I'm just going to draw it white and leave it white on that side of it. Draw my next circle and then color that in. See? Just go with it. Don't don't stress if something, you know, isn't the way you expected it to be. Let serendipity guide you. Those are the happy accidents, the things that happen just because they want to happen and not because you have any control over it. Sometimes beautiful little things beautiful little things happen. I like that. And I also really like getting the chance to do some pen and ink doodles because I've been doing a lot of painting over the holiday season and some crafts. If you're interested in seeing any of those, I'd love to have you watch some of those videos just because they're really good videos. See, I want to kind of get a thicker area right here. I'm trying to stay back on my pen far enough so that you can see what I'm doing. Now, I'm going to do this whole side in real time and then I will fast forward the other side. So I'm going to try and mimic things on both sides, but I think it'll make it quicker if I just do it all this way. I think that I'm just going to draw little leaf shapes. They're kind of a teardrop leaf. And then in those triangles, I will fill them in and in any little open spaces between the leaves. Just like that. And I'm going to do that to all of those little spaces, I think. And that one's going to just get colored in all the way. And maybe, because I can't help myself, I'm going to put some little like hatching lines. Not cross hatching, I'm just making like shadow lines, but they're all going the same direction. Ooh, that's pretty. I like working over these colors like this. This is really fun. I think we're going to do another set of leaves. Like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and put those little hatching lines in. Doing it the same way, just drawing along. And then I'll fill these spaces in with black. I could use a different pen to fill this in, I know. But sometimes you use the pen, if you're going to do it, just use the pen that you have in your hand. If waiting until later you forget that you're going to do it when you're going to look for a different pen to fill it in. I do have some other pens sitting here, but right now this is what I want to use. I like the look. It makes me think of those 
uh, hand-tooled purses that, oh gosh, I remember my grandma had one of those. They were the leather kind of saddlebag purse. And it was all hand-tooled, kind of like the uh, fancy, fancy tooling that you would see on, on saddles. I guess it was really popular a long time ago. And I don't remember my mom having one, but I remember my grandma had one of those hand-tooled purses. Who remembers those? Either you had one or you know somebody who did. Now in these really big spaces, I could do an outline at leave a space and then fill it in, but I'm running the, running the coloring right up to the edge. And then fill that one in. And it's going to get filled in black out here. So it's fun to do these types of things. Take some time for yourself. And you don't have to do it all in one go. You could, you know, get your outline done, fill in part of a wing, go have tea, go, you know, do something with your family. You know, we can't, we can't get away from all of our obligations. No matter what time of year it is, you know, if it's, springtime and kids have sports or you've got you know dance classes or whatever you know so whatever your obligations are remember to breathe and take some time for yourself and You'll find that you like to do do your your leaves, these types of shapes, one direction more than another. Now, I just went across the one from be in front of it, or that I did before. Before, that's okay. What I'm going to do, is I'll make my little uh, center line, and then that will just get worked in to my lines going here. And then I can just go like this and this edge then gets all colored in. Nothing is irretrievable. <laughs> Nothing is un, um, unattainable. You can fix just about anything. People will say, oh, pen and ink so hard. You put a line down, you can't do anything with it afterwards. Um, I beg to differ on that. <laughs> I've been showing you all along as I'm going here how sometimes I don't put the line where I want it. And that's okay. Just draw a new line and work the other one in. It's always an opportunity to adjust. Now let's see. What am I going to do? actually think I'm going to put a few little dots in those open spaces on the leaves just because it's fun to do little little things like that to fill space it doesn't take a lot See how quickly I got done with that. I think I'm going to do some fills, some patterns in those spaces. And, hmm. actually going to do kind of those petal shapes like a flower almost maybe I'll make it a flower flower in the middle cut 
color those in, those open spaces. And then I think I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap, maybe not. Maybe I'll color that one in and try making my gap again. <laughs> That's what happens sometimes. There. Maybe I'll go ahead and make those gaps for all of them. I'm going to leave those gaps white or uncolored. And then maybe this will be like little heart petals. I think with this part right here, these bottom wings are going to actually feel like they're maybe part of a mandala or something. Just a, a portion of one. Like that. And color those little bits in. That's fun. See, it doesn't take a lot. You don't have to do tons of, you know, tons of detail. Maybe I'll put a circle in each one of those. But still, not a ton of detail, not hard to do. Uh, let's see here. So if we're continuing with the petals, or maybe I'm going to do, yeah, they could still be like petals, just little pointy petals, or little flame petals. I think that I'm not going to color the spaces in completely. Like that. And a little circle. Hmm, now I get to decide. Are those spaces going to be colored? I think so. I think I'm going to leave the circle uncolored or just the color of the paint on the paper. Yes, this is where having a thicker pen would be quicker. Again, I didn't grab one. And at this point right now, I'm really into this. I don't want to stop and go searching because if I stop and search, I'm not going to be as likely to get started again right away. It took me a little bit of time to get back from lunch. My phone kind of sucked me in. But, you know, I was still relaxing. It's just... This is more relaxing. <laughs> oh, did I not? Ah, oh, didn't hit record on my phone. There we go. At least I was recording from above. Well, there we go. Sometimes you remember to hit the record button and sometimes you don't. That's okay. Oh, this is looking so pretty though. I like that a lot. Just remember, slow down, breathe, relax, and enjoy the process. If you're not enjoying it, it's not worth doing. Unless it's, you know, things that have to be done, like, you know, taxes or the dishes. But if you're not enjoying your, your hobby, your pastime, your projects, then it's time to find a new, a new hobby, a new pastime, a new project. 
And maybe it's something that, you know, you've really enjoyed doing for a long time, but maybe you're just getting bored of it. I have been known to switch hobbies quite frequently, much to the detriment of my YouTube channel, because when I change my focus, I want to share it with people, but YouTube doesn't like it when I share when I change up and share different things. So that's just the way it goes. Sometimes, sometimes. All right, let's see here. One more and it needs to be big or it needs to be a lot. Maybe I'll do long skinny. Oh, this is going to be a a lot to color in, isn't it? Actually, no, not if I keep my petals fairly close to each other. Oh, didn't even hit the end on that one. That's okay. Look at that. I think that as I'm moving across though, my petals are starting to get a lot chubbier. And you know when I'm really enjoying something, I go very quiet, which is one of the reasons why I am going to do this, do the second set of petals or second set of wings, um, just as a fast forward, because I want to just be quiet and enjoy my time. And now that you've seen how everything is made, We can do that. So going in, doing those tiny little details around, filling in spaces. And if I end up filling over a petal, oh, well, like that one right there. I don't like how skinny it is. See, I like that one right there. And I'm just going to make that into a petal. Come around. Nice thing about this pen, it is very, very fine. There we go. Don't like that really skinny one there. Just going to fill it in. But you can. You can change things up. They don't have to end up being exactly the way you started out drawing the way you started out thinking about it. That's one of the beauties of doodles is that they can change. As you're doing them, you can adjust, you can modify, you can completely color something out that you don't like. Just Give yourself permission to do it. You're the only one in, in charge of your artwork. I'm not in charge of your artwork. You get to make your own decisions. Move your artwork to make it easier to color in. I do find that when I'm doing standard artwork like this, every once in a while when I'm doing these tiny little details, I want to go like this and expand it so I can see the detail better. That's what I would do if I was doing this on my iPad. I would be expanding it so that I could really get in and do those tiny details because they wouldn't be so tiny. But, you know, this way. It all is down to what my eye can see and my hand can do.
and I am having so much fun doing it. There we go. This is completely filled in on the right hand side. I am going to do the left hand side and then come back and show you what it looks like. All right, it's all done. I'm really happy. Oh, I'm not done. Okay, not done. I see that now. All right, so there, I'm done. Do they match exactly on both sides? No, and I'm glad about that. It makes it look even more handmade, hand created. I love it. I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave me a comment down below if you want to see more doodling being done in, you know, shapes of critters. Let me know your favorite critters down below in the comment section. And uh, if you want to see more doodling, make sure and click that thumbs up button because that's how I'll know you enjoyed this video. And remember to go out, do something creative, take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.